So what do you do if your Reaper project starts to lag? Maybe you have a project with 100 tracks in it and you're starting to see the transport window flash red or things are just slow and draggy. Well, I have a couple of quick suggestions for you. I'm Keith from no label, no producer, no limits.com. Let's hit it. So if you have a project with a lot of tracks, perhaps a lot of virtual instruments and a lot of effects in it, sometimes those start to lag in Reaper, although Reaper is very efficient. Let me point you to two ways that you can easily solve that. The first is you can look up here in the right hand corner and you can see your project settings, some of your project settings here. I'm going to click on this and it opens up here on this request block size. Now, request block size, this is what controls the overflow from your CPU. So if your CPU can't handle the real-time processing, it wants to offload it, and this is the amount of space it has to offload. So if your project is lagging, you can increase this space here, and that will give your CPU a little bit of breathing room. Now this also increases latency, so if you're recording, you might wanna keep it down as much as you can. These work in powers of two, so I'm at 32, I could go to 64, 128, 256, 1024, 512, whatever, and that will increase my latency, but it will give my CPU more room to work with. Now latency isn't important when you're mixing, so pump it up as high as you like. The second place to look is in the performance window. So I'm going to hit Control alt p that would be Command-Option-P on a Mac, and you can see here I have some columns here, one of which is Effects CPU. This is how hard each individual track's effects are hitting the CPU. If I tap on this column here, it will sort by CPU usage. So you can see track one here is called Problem Track, and it is pulling 11% just by itself. And the rest, the rest of these tracks are typically down here around 2%, although the second track is pulling 4%. So let's just take a look at what we can do with that. I'm going to select all except for the Problem Track by clicking, holding down Shift and then clicking again, and let's hit Mute. And notice what happens to these numbers. After a few seconds, they're all down to 0%. So that's one thing that you can do. Let's unmute them. And now I'm going to turn off all the effects. And once again, they go down to zero. Playing back audio tracks takes very little CPU. It's the effects that take the CPU. I help people make better home recordings in Reaper. If that's interesting to you, type home recording in the comments and I'll get you a link. So let's suppose we're okay with all those 2% uh, readings, but this 11% reading is bothering us on track one. Let's do something called freezing a track and notice what happens to this number. I'm going to right click on the track and go to freeze. And this is a mono track, so I will freeze to mono. And what this is going to do is instead of processing the effect every time, it's going to bake the effect into the track so that it offloads the processing and it will sound exactly the same. Now don't worry, it's not permanent. You can unfreeze the track at any time if you want to make some changes to that effect. Okay, now we finished freezing the track and as you can see, we're back down to zero CPU usage on that problem track. The next video in this series is mixing with clarity and separation. And that's really going to help you get those mixes where everything fits just the way it should fit together. For now, I'm Keith from no label, no producer, no limits.com. Bye bye.